So one of the reasons why you always say take spring results with a grain of salt is, for the most part, you don't know exactly who those results are coming against. Uh, did you amass a lot of hits against non-roster invite pitchers and, you know, 19-year-old arms in the eighth inning? Or were you facing the other team's best pitchers in the early innings of games? And while that remains true, and, and certainly one at-bat does not signal an entire season of success, one of the reasons everyone's so excited about Jackson Merrill is he's been playing against, uh, you know, the first pitchers in games, and yesterday had maybe his best swing of the spring against a a true ace, Zach Gallen, top of the rotation pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks, an opposite field, two-run home run that uh, just kind of showed off everything that we've seen so far from Jackson Merrill. The swing, the barrels, the bat-to-ball skills that that he possesses do seem like they're ready to play on a major league level. Is that is that fair to make that leap from what you've seen from him this spring? I mean, yeah, absolutely. And and I know he's he's a little bit inexperienced for a lot of people who I respect. Um I, I, I understand that. And and all I can tell you is the combination of needing a center fielder and having Jackson Merrill perform as well as he has, that's a good combo, in my opinion. Like it doesn't feel forced. When it did, maybe six weeks ago, it doesn't feel forced now. It it did feel that way to me. Like, is he really going to get a look? That's nuts. But he's done everything. We've talked to him. We've sat down. We looked him in the eye. We've we've heard him in 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 interviews. And and, and again, I know that that when he's facing you know a ninety eight mile an hour. Uh, nasty rising fastball from Tyler Glass now. Hi, this is Jackson Merrill. That means nothing, right? Yeah, but he faced a nasty Zach sure, Gallon man. yesterday. Absolutely. And and what I'm saying is it doesn't feel forced to me anymore. Um, it just doesn't. And, and I'm super-duper happy for him. I think he absolutely deserves it. Mike Schilt would not commit to you know, penciling him in the opening day lineup. Came close, though. He came I mean, very if you, close. If you didn't hear it, this is what Mike Schultz said about uh, Jackson Merrill's prospects at this point yesterday. Can you just tell us that Jackson Merrill is, is going to be on the team? And... I can tell you Jackson Merrill is going to Korea. That's what I can tell you, Ace. <laughs> Not that he'll be starting in center field on the 20th. You said it. What, obviously, this guy's had a lot of hard outs. He has played really well. What do you see in the last, uh, I don't know, few days, especially with the two home runs, one off Zach Allen? What? Look, he's earned every spot. He's earned yeah. his, his way on the plane. He's earned what's coming after the plane. So he's done a great job and uh, couldn't be happier for him. You know, clearly he swung the bat well, played good defense, ran the bases well, you know, plays with a lot of hard energy, passion. Play smart. Um, just a lot to like about Jackson Merrill. So good for him. Congratulations to Jackson. How important is his his clear kind of confidence that he has in the ability to handle the challenges that will inevitably come given the sport that he's playing? Yeah, you know it's important. Um, being able to have self confidence that's real and belief in yourself and an identity of who you are as a player. You know this game is really super hard. It's really challenging. Um, so when things don't go as well, you've got a support system, of course, of your coaches and teammates and all the people in your life that have helped you. But ultimately, when you know who you are and what you do, and you go back to that when you need it, um, you know, it's, uh, it's your anchor. So he's got a good anchor. So, uh, you know, I think Mike Schilt said it pretty much without saying it, especially when he said uh, he's earned what comes after the plane as well. Uh, uh, a strong indication that Jackson Merrill not only made the traveling party, but he's going to be on the 26-man roster, and he's going to be in a lineup on opening day in center field against Tyler Glass now and the Dodgers. And, again, his slash line this spring, 343 average, 395 OBP, 600 slugging percentage. OPS of almost 1,000. But, it, you know, you can ha- you can put – I've seen guys put up those kind of slash numbers. Oh, yeah. What's the BABIP? Are they looping in a lot of singles yeah. or – are they actually driving the ball? Jackson Merrill's slash line, if anything, might be a little light. Yeah. He's, as as um, it was mentioned, he's hit a lot of hard outs, yeah, too. Uh, he's only struck out, I think, this, the, for the third time all spring yesterday, uh, which in this day and age of baseball is ridiculous, even against spring training pitchers, is pretty crazy. So those numbers, they're not a mirage. 
based on some bloops and some ground balls that found holes. He's actually swinging the bat incredibly well. He's been doing it for the most part early in games against Major League Baseball caliber pitching like Zach Gallen yesterday. And there's really no reason not to have a, a great deal of confidence in Jackson Merrill, despite his age, going forward, that, that he's going to be on this team. And I would expect Jackson Merrill is going to have a very solid rookie season if he stays healthy and possibly could be in the in the running for a, a National League Rookie of the Year right, so award. Tap the brakes. Well, just, uh, what, why would I tap the brakes? Just settle down. I'm putting a lot on this kid. I'm not putting – well, I mean, he puts as much on as anyone. Guy yeah, does not lack for confidence. We've seen that. Sure. You know, part of it is, you know, you be on the team all year long. That certainly helps you any candidacy. Yeah. I mean, do you expect, let me ask you, do you expect Jackson Merrill? Well, obviously he's going to struggle at some point. Is he going to struggle so badly they're going to have to send him back to the minor leagues? It's a possibility. Well, it's, it's a huge possibility. And, I mean, he's he, you have the ability to do that with a young, you controllable do. player. Maybe even likely. I don't know. Yeah, like over I mean, it's a 50% maybe... chance that he gets sent down. I don't think so. 50-50. I don't think so. I think it's, it's 50, less than it's that. It's literally 50-50. I think it's, for every I young think it's less than that. I, I've, I've seen I mean, what... Mickey Mantle got sent down. So, like, anybody can get sent down. I'm not down. saying he's going to be a Hall of Famer, but he looks he looks, he looks looks ready to be an everyday he baseball does. player. No, there's no question, and that's what the plan is. And listen, I'm not going to go – I'm not going to overreact if he goes 6 for 8 in the series, and I'm not going to overreact if he goes 0 for 8. That I promise you. He's a young player. He deserves patience. If they're going to ride with him, he deserves my patience. I'm not going to tell you, Mr. Fan, Mrs. Fan, how to feel. That's my theory. If he, if he gets six knocks and it lights the world on fire, I'm going to be like, hell yeah, man. That's awesome. It's an awesome way to start your career. If he goes 0 for 8 with 7 Ks and a feeble ground out, you know, if he pulls a Mookie Betts in the playoffs, I'm not going to overreact to that either. I'm not, but based on what I've now considered, I really don't think he's all of a sudden going to go out and just start. So what is he going to go over four with four strikeouts after striking out three times in spring yeah, training? It's Tyler Glass now, so it's a real possibility. He, Tyler Glass now has done it to a lot more experienced players than Jack Smith. Right, if, if Tyler Glass now is that good, though, every Padre is going to struggle. Are you going to send yes. Tatis yeah. and correct and no, Bogarts and everybody down? No. Then why would you send Jackson Merrill down if he's he send, a rookie? If he struggle, but. He's in first game. I'm if not he, saying they, they're going to send him down, but okay. I'm saying it's I, a possibility. I'm, I'm he's not going to get sent down because of the two games in Korea against the Dodgers, against, right? Against Glasnow and, and Yamamoto, and then when he, he also has options. And then when he faces like in May, but don't you feel like when he faces you know your average caliber major league pitching, he's more than ready, yeah. to be up there. Yeah, and there's nothing average. Well, about, the Padres don't have anything better than him, so I don't no. think he's going anywhere. There's, I really don't. There's nothing. Huh? There's nothing average about Tyler Glasnow. Uh, nothing. So I mean, he's filthy, man. So if he if he goes and struggles, I'm not gonna be surprised, and I'm certainly not gonna be down on the kid. I'm I'm elated for him. He's one of the one of the best kids. We've interviewed a lot of the the kids out there in the last few years. He's one of the best, if not the best, interview person that we've met. Period. He's great, and it's not just because he put our t shirt on. That was a badass move, but it's because <laughs> of his makeup. Um, it's the way that he plays. It's it's the 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 words that everybody speaks about him, it's great. It's great. But I'm not going to be surprised if he struggles. And listen, he would not be the first guy to get called up and then be sent down to figure some things out. So. And, and you, well, you're absolutely right. My my prediction, and this is just me, my opinion, and, and I, I could be wrong, I think he's here to stay. Yeah, I, I hope I, so. I, be, I believe that Jackson Merrill more. is here to stay I, for the San Diego Padres. I absolutely hope so. I absolutely hope that he is the center fielder of the future for the San Diego Padres, no question. But, but I'm also he, if, tapping the brakes. Not even if. When he struggles, yeah. if he gets sent back down to work on some things, yeah. don't be, no, nobody freak out. It's just it's it's fine. Fine. It's, it happens. It happens all the time. And, I mean, look. Think about think about just the last few years of of can't miss guys that have missed, and I'm not I don't just mean with the San Diego Padres, I, Joe Adele, Mickey Moniak's having you know a bit of a resurgence. I mean, you're talking about Ben, you're talking about one one guys sometimes that that struggle and have never been able to find their footing because hitting in the big leagues is so hard. Hitting in adult league is hard. Hitting in coach pitch is hard. It's hard, hard, hard to do. So. Um, I love it. I'm elated for him. I think, and I asked you this off the air, I said, did the announcement of he's going to be on the plane 
And it, like, I thought it was a bit of a weird announcement, but then the more I thought about it, I think when you get to Korea, that's when maybe you do some sort of video. Because I want the content. Like, I want to see him getting the news. You know, hey, man, you're you're in the lineup. It's a circumstance of the Padres' weird it's season a weird, once again. It's a weird – baseball did this. The Padres didn't do this. They put the Padres in this position to have to do it weirdly. I understand what you're saying, and those are always fun videos, but – I don't think Jackson Merrill had any doubt that he was going to be there. Hundred percent. I think his it's reaction is going to be like, "All right, yeah, duh, I'm going to Korea." Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's going to be like, oh, "I really, I made I'm the in the team. lineup." No, it's not like, the slightly above average starting pitcher in Double A getting the call up for a spot start. You know, if it's first time in the big leagues, it's a little bit different yeah. than that. Uh, then when the manager comes to to Jackson Merrill and says, "Kid, you've made the team," his answer, "Yeah, no shilt." Whoa, he scared me to death. God, he really did. He scared me for a well, second. he's the manager, so, you know. Whew, man. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan, and I think he's going to do well. Again, I don't know that he's going to be an MVP. I don't I don't know that he has. I'm going to tell you right now, he's not going to be an MVP. Not this, this year, year, but I mean, <laughs> any time in his career. I don't know what the ceiling is. If it's, you know, I, I, if he, I don't think he's a Tatis necessarily. He's not that. Electric, he's not that yeah, incredibly very, very few are Slow gifted. That's I mean, exactly. I, I don't see that necessarily for him, but I think the floor is pretty high here on Jackson Merrill. No doubt. And I think he has the mental makeup to deal with some he was asked about it yesterday. He said, Yeah, I I did struggle some last year, and it was a good learning experience for me. He embraces everything that he's getting and he he just doesn't mind it. He's a baseball player. He loves baseball. He's going to be there. Yeah. And that's why I don't think he's going back down. I think he's here to stay. Now, I, I don't so. think he's I don't think he's going to be immune from some struggles, but I don't think they're ever going to be like he is so lost we need to send him sure. back down to the minor right, leagues. How about this? Simply put, more or less production in center field in 2024 than we saw more. in 2023. More. more. Yeah. I think more. I think so. Yeah, I, I agree. More is the I, answer I, there. He's he's not as good of a defensive center fielder as Trent Grisham. Honestly, few of course not. few are, but uh, he's going to be more than serviceable there, and he's going to be better with the bat. He's not going to be dropping pop flies that he's just camped on. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be noticeable drop off defensively, and yeah, it's going to be. I think it's going to be fine. But can't, I can't I, do much I, worse offensively. I am just. Uh, I'm very happy for him. Um, he's 20 years old. He's going to have some things to figure out. It's going to speed up for him uh, greatly when he gets to Korea. It's going to speed up more when he you know, runs out, hopefully, to center field on opening day here against the Giants. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. 